Hi everyone, welcome back to our Winging It 2023 project. Each week we are making a block for a quilt on a garden theme and if you haven't seen any of our videos before, don't worry. Each piece works well as a standalone piece of textile art and I will link a playlist at the top of the screen so that you can catch up if you want to. Hi everyone, I thought I would just jump in and interrupt to say hello. I haven't done a piece to camera for a while and I thought it might be nice to say hi, remind you that I do have a face, there is a person behind the hands and voice in my videos and just to thank you all for being here. If you've been with me since the very beginning, thank you so much for your support and for carrying on through 2023. And if you're brand new, you are very, very welcome. I'm so excited to see such a fantastic community growing up around this channel and it's great to have you here. As a special treat for those of you that are watching my videos, Keep your eyes peeled because a voucher code is going to appear at the bottom of the screen at some point during this video. It will give you 15% off everything in our shop. There's a link to our website in the description below. Do go and check it out. We have beginner friendly products from everything from felt Easter eggs right through to our brand new kit which is our spectacular summer sunflower garland. It's the biggest kit we have ever produced and it's got a bit of everything in there. There's felt, there's beads, there's embroidery thread. It looks amazing displayed in your home so do go and check that out. It launches on the 3rd of March 2023 and we have a very limited stock so if you are keen to get your hands on one get in there quickly. Thanks again for continuing to watch and I will let you get back to the tutorial. Bye! I thought I'd start by taking you around what's on my table. So I've got my 20 centimeter square backing fabric and this week I'm using a pale blue cotton. I thought it would work well. I've also got some other fabrics. So I've got my solid yellow, my solid pink, my narrow blue stripe, my plain blue and my red spot and I've also got some bond web. I've got an iron off camera as well that I'll be using with the bond web. I've got my embroidery and paper scissors. I've got a range of marking tools here. So I've got my water erase pen and heat erase pens and a pencil. And I've also got some thread. So I've got my 001, my 683, which is dark green. It's the one that I've been using for lettering. I've got my light green, which is 255. These are all Anchor brand. I've got my pink, which is 025. My yellow, which is 298. My red, which is 046. And my blue, which is 130. I have got a template available for this week's panel and it's available on our website. I will put the address at the bottom of the screen and I'll also put a direct link in the description below. So this will cost you just one pound to download and it's all measured out for you. I'm going to start off by tracing my design onto my backing fabric. So I'm just going to line up my cotton with the outside square on the template and I'm using my water erase pen to trace it because we're going to be using bonder web and so I don't want my lines to disappear as soon as I touch them with an iron. So even though it's blue on blue, my water erase pen will work really well for this. And I'm not going to worry about reversing the image because it doesn't really matter. What I'm looking for is the placement of the flowers. So you can see I have sketched that in now and I can see it perfectly well. So the next stage is to start tracing my shapes onto some bond web. This week's block is a really simple one. I thought it would be a nice break from all of the fun and games we've been having in the last few weeks. So this one's going to be quite a short video. So I've got my bond web here. I'm making sure that it's paper side up and rough side down. And if you're not sure about how to use Bonder Web, I will link a video in a card at the top of the screen where I go through the process in much more detail. 
So I'm working on the paper side of my bond web and I'm just going to trace around the flowers and the centres separately. So I've just gone round the first flower there and I've got a little space here for the flower centre and I'm just going to mark this with a number one. So I'm going to make sure I know which middle goes with which flower because they are all different sizes. So this one will be flower number two and I'm marking the centre and the flower with the number and I'm just going to number the flowers left to right and then along the top and then left to right along the bottom. So now I've got all my flowers and centres marked and numbered and I want to deal with them separately. So I'm just going to take out all of the flowers. Now I'm not going to cut around them precisely. We do that once we've attached the bond web to the fabric. So I just want to cut them out roughly so that I've got them all separate. That will allow me to have them all on different fabrics. So let me bring back in my backing fabric. I've got a range of different coloured fabrics here and what I want to do is balance them. And my favourite of all my fabrics is this red spot. So I think I want that to feature quite strongly. And I think I'm going to put it on flower number one and flower number six here, just so that it's a really significant colour in our mix. So I've got my ironing pad and this time I want my glue side down onto the reverse of the fabric. So I'm making sure I've got the wrong side of the fabric up and I'm putting the glue side, the rough side of the bond web down. And I want to be as frugal as I can with this fabric. So I'm just working out where to place them so that I minimize waste. And if I just cut off this little spike here, that allows me to get my flowers really close together and I don't have very much waste at all. So now I've got an idea where I'm going to position them. I'm going to iron them on one at a time because there's less margin for error if I do that. So I'm just going to clamp my iron down onto the paper side of the wonder web and hold it in place for about 10 to 15 seconds. And what that does is it melts the glue on the bond web and fuses it to the fabric. So you then end up with glue all over the back of your fabric. And that allows us to then attach it to our backing fabric. So I'm just repeating that process with flower number six. And I've got quite a long strip of fabric here so I've just got my embroidery scissors and I'm just going to trim that down a little bit to make it easier to work with and then I've got my paper scissors and now we can cut out precisely on the line on our bond web and that means that the glue will go right to the edge of the piece and will make sure it's a really good stick when we iron it on. So just getting my backing fabric on now and sometimes you'll be able to just tap the edge and peel away the paper so this one's come off really easily. I'm peeling the paper away and that leaves a layer of glue on the fabric and you'll notice it won't match up precisely because we didn't reverse our pattern. Everything is going to be the reverse of what we sketched on the paper. So I'm just lining it up, I just want the best fit. So I'm popping my first flower on and then this next flower is a little bit more tricky. So if you can't get hold of the edge, just put a little tear in the paper. And that gives you a little, almost like a handle to get hold of it with. And you can peel the backing paper off really easily. And I'm just lining that up with that flower on the bottom line. Just turning it until I've got a best fit. So now I'm going to clamp my iron down for about 10 to 15 seconds and that remelts the glue and causes your red fabric to adhere to the backing fabric. You don't need a hot iron, a medium iron is enough and you'll notice I'm not moving the iron around because that might move your fabric that you're appliquing on so just keep your iron still. 
So I'm going to add in the rest of the flowers and what I'm going to try and do is balance these colours across the piece. So I want different colours to feature in different places. So this is the arrangement that I've chosen for the flowers and now what we want to do is balance those with the middles. So what we're going to try and do is look for where the colour is missing. So you can see I've got yellow in the two corners but not really in the middle and I've only got pink on the top so I'm going to have to work out where to position those colours on other flowers to bring some balance and harmony across the piece. Now the red is my strongest colour and I've got it top and bottom but I don't have any red over on the right hand side so I'm going to put a red middle over towards the right. Now the worst thing has happened and the paper of my bonder web has come apart from the glue and that means that I run the risk of melting it onto my iron. So this happens sometimes, particularly on small pieces. So I've just lined up the glue and paper again, found which way around it's meant to go. And because the paper's loose and quite static and light in weight, it, it could well move when I'm ironing it. So what I'm going to do is just get some baking paper. This is ordinary greaseproof paper and I'm just going to sit it on top just to hold that paper against the bonder web and it protects my iron so if the paper is slightly misaligned it will mean that no glue goes onto my iron but it also holds that paper in place. You can see that the glue stuck to the paper there when I first lifted it up so that glue would have been on my iron had I not put the paper down. So now I'm cutting out my circle you'll notice that I'm moving the fabric and not the scissors. The scissors stay almost in exactly the same place. All I'm doing is opening and closing and I'm turning the fabric and you get a much smoother cut if you do that. I'm just removing the backing paper again and I'm going to balance out that red by putting some in the top corner and triangles are a really good approach for this. If you try and create triangles of colour then you are going to get a nicely balanced piece. So now I'm going to work out where the pink should go and I'm just put, making a diagonal really across from the pink and I'm going to do the same with the yellow. So I only want little splashes of pink. We're going to get pink in in another way in a moment. So I'm going to put yellow on the two blue flowers. I think that's going to look best. And then I can play around with the two blue fabrics. So my mid blue there, I've created a diagonal line across to my red flower and I did cut out a second plain blue but I thought it might be nice to put some of the stripe in and you'll notice that I've put the stripe facing in a different direction just to add a little bit of variety. So now I've got my triangle of that mid blue and I've got my two stripe blue stripe pieces. So we're going to add a little bit of simple embroidery and this is going to help us balance out those colours and we're going to make several flower garland panels as we work through our quilt and I want to keep the colours consistent. So wherever I have got yellow I'm going to use a blue thread to stitch it. So I've got two strands of my blue here and I'm just going to do a simple, really simple running stitch around the outside of the flower shapes. I'm just inside the edge of the shape, so I'm stitching through both the yellow fabric and the backing fabric. And I'm trying to keep my stitches as even as I possibly can. And I've said before in previous videos, my own personal view is that running stitch looks much better if the spaces between the stitches are smaller than the length of the stitches themselves. I think it just looks far more 
professional if you stitch in that way. So there's nothing complicated here. If you know more stitches and you want to do something more adventurous, then by all means do. A blanket stitch might work really well around the edge of these flowers. You might want to try a narrow fly stitch. There's all manner of things that you can do, but I thought I'd keep it really simple this week. So this is just a mindful bit of slow stitch really to give you a break from all the, of the more technical panels that we've done previously. So I've put in all my blue stitches and now I've got two strands of yellow and I'm going to use yellow thread wherever there is red fabric. So I'm just doing exactly the same again, putting in those running stitches around any red sections. I've now got two strands of red thread and I'm going to use that wherever I've used pink fabric. So again, I'm just running stitching around the pink centre that I've got there and I'll do the same with the flower at the top. Now off camera I've also added in some white thread wherever I've used blue. So that's the blue striped fabric and the flat blue fabric. I've added some white running stitches there. So now I've got my mid green so it's not the green that I had originally I didn't think that one worked very well so this color that I'm using is anchor 258 and I'm going to stitch my garland itself the string joining these flowers together with some chain stitch just to give you a bit of an idea I've brought my thread through and I'm taking my needle back down in the same place that it came up and that creates a little loop and on the back, I'm going to bring my needle back through a stitch length away and make sure my needle passes inside that loop. And when I pull tight, my working thread catches that loop and pulls the stitch into place. I will add a full tutorial for chain stitch in a card at the top of the screen if you're not sure. Again, I'm taking my needle back down where the thread came out rocking my needle forward a stitch length and making sure it comes up inside that loop. With chain stitch you don't want to pull too tight because you will lose that roundedness of the stitch. If you wanted to you could stitch this first and then applique your flowers over the top. If you do that you do run the risk of your flowers not attaching very well because obviously they've got that extra texture to work over so you're going to end up with a, quite a lumpy line running through your flowers and you'll see that I'm finishing off my thread and restarting at every place where the string is visible and again you could leave a trail of thread along the back but this eventually is going to be attached together and I'm probably going to do that by running it through a sewing machine and those trailing threads have the potential to get caught and pulled out of shape. So I prefer to just add the stitching and stop and start and I think that's the safest bet for me. So here's our finished panel. I did promise a really quick and easy one this week. We've got our two flower garlands and these will eventually be attached to other panels that are similar on the left and the right. So this is going to be a really long garland of flowers that is going to be a feature of our quilt. If you've enjoyed making this panel, do give us a like. We really, really appreciate it. It helps other people find our videos as well. It's a small gesture that means a great deal. If you want to share your creations, you can use hashtag FSH23quilt and so that we can see all of our flower garland pieces together, you could also add hashtag FSH23quilt8. If you want to do a similar project to this, I will link a video down here and I'll put a video up here that's best for you. If you'd like to subscribe, we'd love to have you as part of our little community here. It means so much to us that you like our videos. You can just click on our logo down here. It makes it really easy for you. So 
Have a great week. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.